The Rothschilds, the wealthiest family of all time. If there's one hard truth, it's that wealth isn't distributed even remotely close to equally. For as long as humans have used currency in exchange for goods and services, there have been those who, fairly or otherwise, managed to hoard quite a pile of legal tender. While the families of long-forgotten kingdoms and empires were indeed wealthy, their stockpile of coins was nothing compared to the 20th and 21st century titans of riches. Elon Musk, Tesla's CEO among many other business ventures, is worth more than $220 billion, making him the wealthiest person in the history of the world. But when it comes to family wealth, none has amassed wealth quite like the Rothschilds. That's why today in this video, we go into details about how, when, and why the Rothschilds remain the wealthiest family of all time. Let's get it on. The Rothschild dynasty is, without a doubt, the pioneer of international finance. Mayor Amschel Rothschild, the first of the family to open a bank, was honored by Forbes as the seventh most influential businessman of all time and the inventor of modern banking who introduced concepts such as diversification, rapid communication, confidentiality, and high volume. Simply, Mayer understood and was willing to spend money in order to make money. But the family's rapid rise to wealth has earned them much animosity throughout the annals of history. A quick Google of the Rothschild family reveals a vast number of conspiracy theories surrounding the allegedly unsavory means used to attain their fortune, the breadth of their connections, and their influence over major world events. To be fair, many elements of the family's history are unsettling enough to pique mass interest. For instance, Mayer's primary manner of hoarding the dynasty's wealth was to institute a policy of keeping friends close and family even closer. So how did a down-on-its-luck brood of German street traders emerge seemingly overnight to become the prime facilitators of modern capitalism, the wielders of immense political power and, as the historians put it, the House of Rothschild, the richest family in all of history? We have the answer. The tale of how Mayer and his sons established an international banking dynasty and you will love it. Mayer Amschel Rothschild, the original architect of the family fortune, was born in 1744. He lived above the family shop with up to 30 relatives in extremely cramped conditions. Mayer's father, Amschel Moses, worked as a money manager and silk cloth trader and had Prince William of Hesse on his client list. However, Amschel wasn't a rich man by any stretch of the imagination, as his meager dwelling suggests. Mayer left rabbinical school in Firth and honed the craft he had dabbled in as a child. In a letter he wrote, In my youth I was a very active merchant, but I was disorganized because I had been a student of the Talmud and learned nothing about business. He worked as an apprentice at the firm of Wolf Jacob Oppenheimer, who provided credit to royalty and engaged in international trade, especially in bullion. Like his father before him, Mayer was able to ingratiate himself with Prince William and make a decent living by collecting and selling rare coins. Mail-order antique sales served as the basis for the Rothschild fortune. In 1769, Mayer was granted the title of court agent, which would prove a boon to his money-making opportunities. Marriage also boosted Mayer's wealth, something he wouldn't forget. In 1770, he married Gutle Schnapper and received a generous dowry from her father who also worked as a court agent. The two would have five sons and five daughters. In his will, Mayer outlined strict, controversial provisions regarding Rothschild marriages. Soon after, he transitioned from antique dealing to banking. Historians describe this as a natural extension of Mayer's work selling antiques, whereby he occasionally provided credit to his customers. His taxable wealth exploded from 4,000 guldens in 1795 to over 60,000 guldens in 1796. But his lack of organization made his wealth a target for employees. A junior employee named Hirsch Liebman embezzled nearly 30,000 guldens over a three-year period thanks largely to Mayer's woefully primitive bookkeeping. In court, Mayer admitted to leaving bags of money out in the open in both his office and house. Revolutions both in nations and technology are what created the German a real fortune. During the French Revolution, Mayer profited by providing supplies for the Austrian army with coins from the British. He also sensed the potential for earnings through industrialization and was a large importer of English textiles. He would soon expand his operations in England and throughout the world. At the turn of the century, Mayer sent his sons to establish banks in the major European capitals. The Rothschild coat of arms includes a fist clutching five arrows, a reference to his five sons. The ruthless German sent his sons to establish banks in Frankfurt, Naples, Vienna, France, and London. The release of the five arrows symbolizes strength through unity and marks the beginning of Rothschild's global banking dynasty. 
Through his will, Mayer continued to control the direction of the family by promoting intermarriages. The businessman was concerned that the family's fortune would be diluted as it grew through marriages. As such, his will barred female descendants from any direct inheritance and, in effect, provided incentives for intermarriages. Four of his granddaughters married first cousins, while one married her uncle. The five sons included Amschel, Carl, Solomon, Nathan, and Jacob. Amschel Rothschild, the eldest son, stayed in Frankfurt to manage the home branch. One of the lesser known of the Five Arrows, he died childless in 1855, and control of the Frankfurt branch was passed on to his brother Carl's sons. Carl Rothschild established CM de Rothschild and Figuli in Naples. While there, Carl established a close and profitable relationship with the notorious ruling de Medici family. His daughter Charlotte ended up marrying his nephew Lionel, the son of Nathan. Salomon Rothschild founded SM von Rothschild in Vienna. He played a key role in financing the Nordbahn Rail and was an avid art collector. He lost some wealth and became a target of public criticism during the revolutions of 1848 and subsequently handed the bank off to his son. His daughter Betty married his brother James in accordance with family custom. James established the Paris branch of the family business, de Rothschild Frères. The Paris branch was among the most successful of the family's banking branches, due in large part to James's close relationship with King Louis Philippe. The house where his children grew up is now part of the American embassy. James purchased Chateau Lafitte, which remains in the family to this day. This plot, located in the Bordeaux region, is one of the best vineyards in France. The most successful son, Nathan, got his seed money from Landgrave William IX. The former Prince William of Hesse, who did business with both Amschel Moses and Mayer, assumed his father's title in 1785. After Napoleon invaded, he fled to Denmark after entrusting Mayer with a substantial portion of his wealth. Rothschild funneled the money to Nathan in England, who earned a handsome return and eventually returned the principal along with some profit to William. Nathan's shrewd investments grew the family fortune using the sovereign's money. Unfortunately, he inherited his father's lack of organization, but that didn't stop his rise to the top. A letter from his father reads, All our correspondents complain about you, dear Nathan, and say that you are so disorganized when sending consignments. Sometimes you write that you have sent, for example, the chest with this number, then later it arrives with another number. I already complained in Frankfurt about your extraordinary expenditures and disorganization. Dear Nathan, I don't like it. Nonetheless, Nathan married into money in 1806 and opened N.M. Rothschild & Sons five years later. His wife, Hannah Cohen, was the daughter of a prominent diamond dealer, one of Nathan's business associates. The marriage increased his business connections and profits and he opened N.M. Rothschild & Sons in 1811. He would pioneer the ingenious strategy of lending to governments during wartime and having the winner cover the loser's debt. Nathan stood to make a huge gain or loss based on the outcome of the Battle of Waterloo, and an urban legend suggests he was the first to hear the news of Wellington's victory. He was stone-faced hearing this incredible news and proceeded to sell stock in order to trick others into thinking that Britain had lost. When the dust settled, Nathan's agents had picked up even more stock at a discount on a huge profit-making day for the family. He also pioneered the ingenious strategy of lending to governments during wartime. This tactic used when Nathan funded Wellington's army in 1814 is the primary cause of the explosion in the family's wealth during what proved to be 150 years of nearly chronic warfare. From 500,000 pounds in 1818, the Rothschilds' wealth rose to over 4 million pounds in just a decade while this strategy was implemented across the family branches. And without stepping foot in the new world, the Rothschild family stamped dominance in international finance. Historians document that for the most of the 19th century, N.M. Rothschild was part of the biggest bank in the world which dominated the international bond market. Today, the Rothschild family is estimated to be worth a skin-stretching $500 billion. However, some theorists believe that it could actually be up to $500 trillion. Crazy, right? During the modern era, the family has taken a much less central approach to international banking and finance. They have donated many of their estates and pieces of art to the public, and today they are much less likely to engage in lavish displays of wealth. The most important business entity for the family is the Rothschild Group. This group controls a number of Rothschild financial companies around the globe. In 2001, one of the Rothschild mansions was put on the housing market for £85 million. 
At the time, this was the most expensive residential property in history. Built entirely out of marble, the 9,000-square-foot property is located in Kensington Palace Gardens in London. The property also features an underground parking garage that can fit 20 cars. In 2012, one of Rothschild's major investment trusts purchased a 37% stake in a wealth management group owned by the Rockefeller family. There are a number of prominent Rothschilds alive today. These include David Mayer de Rothschild, a billionaire and environmentalist. There is also Hannah Mary Rothschild, a documentary filmmaker. Nathaniel Philip Rothschild is the co-chairman of Atticus Capital, a hedge fund worth over $20 billion. One name you might have heard is James Rothschild, who married Nikki Hilton in 2015. Generally, the Rothschild family has over 1,800 real estate properties spread across England, France, Germany, and other European countries. The combined value of all these properties is over $36 billion. Their wealth also includes over 55 luxury yachts, 10 private jets, and 13 luxury hotels. The family owns an enormous cash reserve of over $70 billion kept safely within the banks owned by the family itself. They also own shares in big companies including Meta, Apple, Berkshire Hathaway, Amazon, Bloomberg, and Bank of America, among others. And that's it from us today. What do you think about the Rothschild family and all their wealth? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed our video, why not click on another showing on screen now? Remember to click the subscribe button for more of our luxurious content and give us a like and share. This is The Luxurious. Talk to you in the next video.